The first Star Wars movie was released in 1977, and here I am, almost 50 years later, making this video. So cue the music, because today, I'm going to go over the entire history of Star Wars. From the initial revolutionary success, to the controversial follow-up trilogy, all the way through the slowest steady decline of the franchise that we are now seeing today. Buckle up, because this is the complete history of Star Wars. To properly start, we must go to the beginning. George Lucas was born in 1944. No, I'm just kidding. That's way earlier than we need to go. As you all probably know, Star Wars originally came to life with the release of the first movie in 1977. It was at first just called Star Wars, because if it hadn't been popular, there wouldn't have been any more movies. But luckily for us, and for this YouTube channel, it was a wild success, and a massive one at that. It grossed exactly $775 million worldwide, which was literally unheard of for such a unique movie. It was safe to say that George Lucas' vision of making more Star Wars movies would become a reality, and so it wasn't a surprise at all when in 1978 the Star Wars holiday special was released, and it sucked. <laughs> like, really sucked. Watching it back, it's kind of insane that all the original cast actually agreed to participate in it, and Harrison Ford says he has no memory whatsoever of filming it. Do you remember making this Christmas special? I think it was 1978. No, you don't remember it? <laughs> Regardless, it didn't really matter too much, and in 1980, The Empire Strikes Back hit theaters, and instantly became a classic. Against all odds, Lucas had captured lightning in a bottle twice, and keep in mind, it wasn't like today, when sequels and prequels are a common occurrence. Releasing a series of movies several years apart was practically unheard of, and a very risky move, but it paid off. And three years later, in 1983, the final installment of the Star Wars original trilogy was released in theaters. Even though it wasn't quite as loved by fans as the first two movies were, Return of the Jedi still did incredibly well, and finished off what would prove to be one of the most financially and culturally successful film trilogies of all time. Around this general period, there had also been some incredibly small and niche TV shows that had been made, such as Droids and Ewoks, which both aired between 1985 and 1986. However, the impact of those shows was so small and insignificant that it almost isn't worth mentioning. Let's get back to the mainstream movies. After releasing those three original bangers, George Lucas had to let them cook for a while. 16 years, to be exact. But in 1998, rumors started flying around about a new Star Wars trilogy, set before the originals. These would document the fall of the Republic and the rise of the Empire. And thus, in the middle of 1999, The Phantom Menace was released in theaters to some very mixed reactions from fans. A lot of people, who usually tended to be younger, thought it was great. It was everything I thought it was going to be and more. But the older audience generally didn't enjoy it as much. Thumbs way down. You didn't like it. No, I, I think I deserve a public apology from George Lucas. The big the biggest complaint that the movie received was usually that it was geared too much for children. And to be fair, George Lucas himself did admit that the movie was made for 12 year olds, so that didn't really help. It's hard for people to realize, and I'm not supposed to say this, and I wasn't supposed to say it then, but you know, it's a film for 12 year olds. Regardless, the addition of things like Jar Jar Binks, young Anakin Skywalker, and several other plot points made the movie unappealing in the eyes of a lot of people. It didn't really matter though, seeing as the movie still grossed a billion dollars at the office. At that point, Star Wars was still riding high off the success of the original trilogy, so it wasn't too much of a shock. Three years later, Attack of the Clones was released in 2002, and this movie was really a point of contention for Star Wars fans. It seemed that, again, a lot of older fans tended to think that this new trilogy was simply not living up to the legendary originals. With Attack of the Clones came a plethora of new problems. Namely, the often bad CGI, the incredibly awkward and poorly written dialogue, and perhaps the most infamous of the bunch, the romance scenes between Anakin and Padme. The general perception was, for a lot of people, that George Lucas had gotten lucky with the originals, and these new prequels just couldn't keep up. As a result, Attack of the Clones only grossed around $600,000, almost half of what The Phantom Menace had made. In the time between the Attack of the Clones and The Revenge of the Sith, the 2003 Clone Wars micro series was released. The show was based around the adventures of various Jedi during the Clone Wars, and while people who watched it absolutely loved it, it didn't really capture the attention of the Star Wars community as much as George Lucas had hoped it would, and so the project ended after three relatively short seasons. But the real crown jewel was yet to come. In 2005, three years after the debut of Attack of the Clones, Star Wars Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith hit theaters. Instantly, it was regarded as the best prequel movie. All the issues in the previous movies were, for the most part, fixed. Hayden Christensen's acting felt much more deep and natural in this movie than it had in Attack of the Clones. The cheesy romance scenes had been replaced with well-written moments of love and desperation, along with heartbreak and despair. The CGI looked significantly better, and although it wasn't perfect, it was much more realistic and better looking than anything so far. All in all, it looked like the prequel trilogy was going to close on a high note after all. Not that it had been an easy road at all, to be fair. Along the way, Star Wars fans mercilessly ridiculed actors such as Drake Lloyd and Ahmed Best for their roles as young Anakin Skywalker and Jar Jar Banks respectively. Only one movie in the trilogy had succeeded in grossing over a billion dollars, that being The Phantom Menace. And it would take years for the reputation of these movies to slowly shift from a negative to a positive one. However, there was one incredibly important thing that George Lucas did that helped satisfy millions of fans. Despite the lack of success in the original Clone Wars series, a new TV show with the same name was greenlit and handed over to Dave Filoni. It was an enormous risk, especially because of the new style of animation and the previous disinterest that Star Wars fans had had for the last Clone Wars show. And to be honest, it initially wasn't a huge success. A debut 
movie was released in theaters in 2008 to announce the show. Believe me, I should know, I only get yelled at by my comment section for not including it in my videos about a million times a day. Anyway, the movie was nothing to write home about, but it did serve its purpose. The Clone Wars TV show got some early publicity. For the first few seasons, the show received a lot of complaints, generally that it was too geared towards kids and kind of corny. But surprisingly, as the show went on, the reviews got better and better. Fans loved it, old and young, and the show tackled some more interesting concepts and darker themes the longer the seasons went on. It finally came to an end in 2014, having run for six years. Right now, it has a 91% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, one of the better scores that Star Wars projects have received. The show was revived about six years later in 2020 for a seventh and final season. But we'll get to that later. Right as Clone Wars came to an end, Star Wars Rebels was released, and that ran for another four years, coming to an end in 2018. Although there were mixed reviews, it was generally liked by fans, and the last two seasons especially were regarded really highly. It is currently sitting at an 84% audience rating on Rotten Tomatoes. But hey, just so you know, I would give you a 100% on Rotten Tomatoes if you hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much, I really appreciate it. Alright, now we're entering into one of the most, how to put it, interesting times in Star Wars history. A New Hope had been released almost 45 years earlier, and in that time, six movies and one really successful TV show had been made. But two years earlier, in 2012, everything had changed. George Lucas had sold the Star Wars franchise to Disney for a whopping $4 billion and relinquished all control over the universe that he had created. And let's just say that Disney had big plans. Despite George Lucas' original intentions to never make more Star Wars movies, Disney quickly announced that there would be a new sequel trilogy and that it would be released in 2015. Even more shocking was the announcement that they would not be using George Lucas' canon material for that time period, and would instead be carving their own path to give, quote, maximum creative freedom to the filmmakers and also reserve an element of surprise and discovery for the audience. This change was introduced alongside the announcement that any stories from the Star Wars Extended Universe were now no longer canon because of the new trilogy. And there were a lot of Star Wars fans who looked at this change with narrowed eyes. This was a bold move, to be sure, especially given how safe it would have been to use the original material. I mean, giving Star Wars fans exactly what they'd had and loved in the form of books and comics for years would have been a slam dunk for Disney, and definitely a safe bet. But for reasons unknown, Disney went in another direction, and the first of the Star Wars sequels was released in December of 2015. It was a controversial movie to say the least. A lot of fans liked the nostalgia that the new movie had brought, and it was honestly just nice to see a Star Wars movie again after a decade. The movie is currently sitting at an 85% audience approval rating, which is fairly high, especially compared to a lot of Star Wars movies. Even to this day, if you ask most fans, they would most likely tell you that The Force Awakens is the best of the sequels. But just one year later, in 2016, Disney released what would prove to be one of their most popular Star Wars movies ever, and that was Rogue One, A Star Wars Story. Fans absolutely loved the fresh take on the original Star Wars plot, and the movie really brought a lot of world building to the Star Wars universe. It was an unexpected move to be sure, but it paid off, and big time. To this day, it's one of the most highly regarded Star Wars movies. However, any momentum that Disney had built with their first two movies was almost instantly torn down in 2017, with the release of Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi. As soon as it hit theaters, it instantly became one of the most hated movies ever released by Lucasfilm. Some of the biggest complaints were the lack of a sensible plot, the constant need to insert jokes and subvert expectations, and maybe most infamously, the treatment of Luke Skywalker's character, which most Star Wars fans agree was done badly. The movie currently sits at a 42% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, which is one of the worst out of every Star Wars movie. However, interestingly enough, The Last Jedi was loved by critics, and and it is the fourth highest rated Star Wars movie on Rotten Tomatoes. It does beg the question, why do the fans and critics disagree so much? But you know what, I'll leave that up to the comments. Regardless, it's safe to say that this movie was not liked by many, and that's most likely the reason that when Solo A Star Wars Story was released a year later, it did not do well at the box office, becoming the first Star Wars movie to ever lose money. It looked like fans were getting tired of Star Wars, or rather, tired of Disney's Star Wars, and people were just less interested in watching the once-loved franchise they'd grown up with. But that didn't stop the machine, and in the winter of 2019, the third and final Star Wars sequel was released. The Rise of Skywalker hit theaters, and it was generally received much better than The Last Jedi. Without inserting my own opinion too much, this movie did its best to recover from The Last Jedi, and opted to respect the original Star Wars fans and honor the characters they grew up with. But that's just my two cents, and what really matters is that Disney's first full trilogy had been fully released, and according to Disney, the Skywalker saga had ended with the rise of Skywalker. It was pretty unclear what Disney's plan to move forward was. The sequels had left a lot of fans with a bad taste in their mouth, the Skywalker saga was over, and Disney's most recent TV show, Rebels, had ended a year ago. There seemed to be unlimited possibilities, and Disney seized the chance to win back some of their fans. With the release of their new streaming service, Disney+, Plus, Disney released the first ever live-action Star Wars TV show, The Mandalorian, in 2019. Instantly, it became a hit. People loved the western style show set in the Star Wars universe and the weekly episode releases kept fans coming back for every episode. They also released the seventh and final season of arguably the most popular Star Wars TV show, The Clone Wars. This was also met with applause and generally fans found it to be a fitting end to the series. 
With all this positive reinforcement, Disney quickly released a second season of The Mandalorian in 2020. While still generally liked by fans, this season didn't quite capture the magic that season one had brought, but this didn't slow Disney down at all. From 2019 to 2023, Disney released a total of six shows and another season of The Mandalorian. These new shows included The Bad Batch in 2021, The Book of Boba Fett in 2021, Obi-Wan Kenobi in 2022, Andor in 2022, Tales of the Jedi in 2022, and Ahsoka in 2023. The third Mandalorian season was also released in 2023. Although these shows still generated some hype and managed to pull millions of viewers, it became harder and harder to find diehard fans of this new content. Gone were the days of people stretching around city blocks, eagerly waiting for their chance to get into the movie theater. As someone who has spent the last couple years paying very close attention to Star Wars, seeing as it is my job, I can tell you from personal experience that it's become less and less, did you hear about this new Star Wars show? And more and more, a new Star Wars show? Really? Are they still doing that? It also doesn't help that people are overall unimpressed with almost all of the recent content. The most highly rated of any of the recent shows was Andor, and while people really did love that show, it unfortunately has the lowest viewing numbers of almost any Star Wars show to date. While it's hard to find accurate data, an estimated 22 million people have watched the show, which might sound like a lot, but for Disney, it's the lowest viewed live action show to date. All that is to say that generally, it seems people have lost interest in Star Wars. Disney stock has gone down significantly, the shows are getting less and less viewership with every release, and overall, Star Wars fans have just stopped showing up for new content. So what is in the future for Star Wars? Well, as you know, 2024 just started, so Happy New Year! On the bracket for this year, it looks like we'll be getting two new shows, The Acolyte and Skeleton Crew. We'll also be getting a third season of Bad Batch and a second season of Tales of the Jedi. And finally, a new Star Wars themed video game called Star Wars Outlaws will be released, which will most likely prove to be the most impactful of the bunch, but only time will tell. In the further future, there's talk of another trilogy of Star Wars movies being made, set around Rey trying to rebuild the Jedi Order. I'm trying not to include my personal opinion in this video as much as I can, but if you met me on the street and asked me how excited I was for this movie, I would most likely not respond enthusiastically. But hey, that's just me. Anyway, that is the complete history of Star Wars so far, and I did try to keep my personal opinions out of this video, but if you want to hear those, then you should really check out this video right here, where I ranked every Star Wars movie from worst to best. I think you'll really like it. Thanks for watching, and be sure to subscribe.